Welcome to tutorial 120. This is on the GHS interface, focusing specifically on the main window. So in this tutorial, we're going to start introducing the GHS window itself and what do all the buttons on the window mean? What are all the things that you have to look for? So once we do that, we'll also cover the menus. Uh, we're going to introduce the concept of projects. That's something fairly important to GHS. We'll go over the user library, and then we're going to quickly introduce the execution dialog. So these are all things that you'll see pretty much immediately when you first start up GHS. First, a quick disclaimer so that I don't end up with a lawsuit. Uh, this presentation is for instruction only. It's not to be used in engineering or construction. I am not a representative of Creative Systems. This presentation is not endorsed by Creative Systems, and I make no claims of accuracy to the latest version of the GHS software. If you're interested in the official training for GHS, contact Creative Systems. You can look up their website, www.ghsport.com, or contact them directly via phone or email. Okay, the first thing to cover is the GHS interface window. So when you first start up GHS, it should look something like what you see here on the screen. Your version is probably going to be a little bit different, but there are some main elements to notice for all of it. First, you've got the menu bar at the top. Most programs have a menu bar. This one is no different. First place to go always when you're trying to find something. Next thing you'll see, the main section of the window is actually broken into two different areas. You've got the main output display, and then you also have the main input command prompt. So the idea is you type your inputs in the command prompt, and then any outputs that get generated will be produced in the output display. Finally, you have in the bottom left corner the uh, working directory. Uh, that's going to be basically just a path to whatever your current file directory is. A few other things to notice. Uh, near the top of the window, just below the menu bar, is your title. So that's the actual name of your vessel itself. Not necessarily the, the uh, file name. Uh, this is a value and a property that you can assign to the um, vessel itself. So that's going to be your vessel name. Over in the top right corner, you've got your project name, uh, if you've defined a project for whatever you're working on. We'll talk more about projects later in this tutorial. And then just below that bar, you have all of the equilibrium values. So these are all the pieces of information about your ship in its current state. So its weight, its depth, LCG, trim, TCG, all of that. Then let's look down at the bottom right corner. First thing you have to notice at the bottom right are the units. It's currently got units of lawn tons and feet. So it gives the um, force or weight units and then also the length units. Pay close attention to this because the units are not always intuitive uh, and you can get things pretty easily screwed up if you're not watching your units. And finally, I don't have them defined right now but that blank spot in the bottom right corner is where you would see any hotkeys if they were defined. Uh, that's a neat thing that we'll talk about much later around the 900 set of tutorials. Of Hotkeys are essentially you can scope bits of custom code to execute just by hitting one of the F1 key, you know, F keys, uh, F1 through I think F6. But we'll talk about the, that much later. Okay, so I said there are menus. Let's just quickly run over the main ones that there were up there and what you have to care about for each one. So the file menu. Most people know how to do work with file menus. It does what you would expect. Changes directories, allows you to specify paths to new areas for working directories, save files, exits. Reports. Uh, that's the report menu. It controls your output, formatting, printers, directions. Uh, we're going to talk more about that in another set of tutorials. Then we have the view menu. Uh, that controls the command window appearance. So things like your font color, your font size, um, whether you see a background image, all of that. We have the project. Uh, that controls the file management of projects. That menu is going to be pretty handy. We'll talk about that in this tutorial. And then finally you have wizard. Um, this is any predefined analyses, any predefined pieces of code 
would might be included in the wizards. Uh, and again, that's something we'll talk about much later in, I believe, around the 900 series. Okay, so the uh, first thing you have to do now for your homework today is use the help menu. It's the last menu on the right. And use that menu to look up the following two commands. CHDIR, which is short for change directory, and DIR, which stands for directory. So you should actually be able to click on the help menu and you'll see these two commands listed in the help menu options. If you click on them, you'll find help information about what they do. Okay, now let's move on to a new concept of projects. Um, projects are something unique to GHS and they're all about file organization. Uh, they allow you to specify directory names and file names and basically you specify a root file path and root file name and GHS adds on things after that. Um, you can also have it set up where that all of you'll, ha you'll have all of your projects organized under a ma master directory and that each project can contain subdirectories. So the intent that they had behind this was that you would have somewhere on your computer or company network would be one directory that is meant for all GHS analyses. And then under that directory, so that that is your, uh, that one directory is your master directory. And then you will have a project defined. Each project, when you define it, GHS creates a new directory under that master directory. And then that might be where your first analysis goes. And then, but let's say you've got an intact analysis, a damage analysis, basic hydrostatics, floodable links. You know, so you've got four different analyses that you're running, and you want to keep each one of those straight. Or maybe you even have multiple people running this. So each person can also define um, subdirectories within that project. The reason all of this is kind of important is because a lot of the organization of GHS and some of the variables are key to these project names and so it actually will make life easier for you if you can use these project, project concepts. So the first thing is project names. Uh, what? How do you specify a project name? Well first off a couple things you have to know about a project name is that you can't use special characters and you can't use or that you can only use numbers and letters to specify it. That being said you can type in any name you want for a project, any combination of project or of characters for that project name. You know, you can call it Jeff, John, James, one five eight seven four, any of that. Um, so all of those are options. How do you do that? You go up to menu, the menu pro for project, project name, and then you select the um, project itself. So when you type in project name you'll get this second menu that pops up or you can type in a new name to create a new project and that's you know selecting the project is also how you open new projects or existing projects now I said there are master directories uh, that's again the idea of all of your GHS projects go under one master directory um, and then the idea would be that you'd have a different project for each vessel so where you specify that is under project, master directory, and when you click on master directory, uh, you'll get a file browser that opens up, and that way you can actually specify, um, pardon. So the next thing to talk about is the master directory. Uh, the master directory is again the thing where all of your GHS projects would go under. And the idea is you would have one directory for each vessel. So it's under, to specify the master directory, you go to project, master directory, which is the first item on the menu. And that'll bring up a file browser, which you can use to navigate to wherever you want your master directory to be and then you click OK and that's it, it just remembers that master directory location. Okay, now I also mentioned subdirectories. So like I said, um, your project is your vessel. So 
you know, say you have a client that asks you to do a stability analysis for the ship, and you know, they just say they need a stability analysis. They don't really know what that entails. So you start a project for that. Now that stability analysis might have several sub-projects. You'll have the intact, the damage, the floodable links. All of that are sub-analyses, but it's all under one project. And that's where you specify a project subdirectory. So the way you do that is the project menu, and then project subdirectory. And again, this comes up. You can select examples or type in a new directory name. OK, so that is how you use projects. Uh, they can be fairly useful once you get used to them. So I suggest you give it a try. OK, this is another thing that will become handy in future uses. Uh, you're probably going to wonder right now why you should care about this. And right now, if you're just starting to use GHS, you probably won't care about the user library. But later on, when you start to create your own customized scripts, your own customized macros, uh, you might want to store them all in one location. Uh, that's your user library. And it can be on any spot you want, any location, and then you tell GHS where it is located. So to tell GHS the location, you go to File, Set Up Paths, User Library, and then navigate to wherever you want that desired directory to be. As you can see here, it just lets you pick whichever one. OK. Last thing I wanted to talk about is the execution dialog. Uh, the execution dialog appears any time that you start GHS without a run file. So if you just double click GHS on Windows, uh, this will show up at the bottom of the screen. And it, what it's really meant to be able there for is for quickly starting up a project that's already get or quickly getting back to a project. So it'll let you select a project, um, and then from that you can select a run file to edit the run file or to actually run it. Um, all of those different options. And the other nice thing about the execution dialog is the help button. This is not your normal help menu. This is for new GHS users. So if you've just double clicked it, it pops up and you have no idea what this program is. You click that help button there and it will give you a quick intro to what on earth GHS is and what it does. Okay, well thank you very much for watching. You can find more tutorials like this on dmsonline.us.